Hey, hey, hey. Time for another out of this world story from our space. It's not always sunshine and rose petals. Sometimes it's hell on scorched earth. Today on our space, we throw that marital bed to the curb and light it on fire. Up first, an OP dodges what life has thrown at him. Shocked and shattered. My, 25 male, girlfriend, 21 female, left the apartment after a fight at 8 p.m. and returned at 5.30 a.m. She spent the rest of the night on the couch. I didn't sleep a wink that Sunday. I felt like I was dying over and over again. We had been together for five months, and she's the first person I've ever been in love with. She's been caring, disciplined, romantic, funny, and overall the most positive person I've ever met. The next day she left again, and returned around 7 p.m. She sat on the balcony smoking, and I asked her why she didn't stay with him, why she's returning to me. She denied cheating, and I asked her with a shimmer of hope, then where have you been? She said, everywhere. I've already had most of my things packed. I drove across country to build a life with her, so there was a lot of it. She went to take a shower and I waited for her to come out. When she did, I told her I loved her and asked her the same thing I asked myself through tears. Why are you doing this to me? She denied it again, making up shallow excuses. She said she slept in the car. Mind you, it was freezing that night. Plus, I checked the car and it was empty. I just couldn't trust her as much as I wanted. She saw this and finally started to realize I'm breaking up with her, so she turned her to crying and screaming her heart out. She started throwing things at me and hit me with a dryer on the chin. She then crawled on the floor screaming off the top of her lungs that she loves me and wants my children. I called the cops as I felt unsafe and so did the neighbors. Ultimately, five officers arrived and made sure I could finish packing up. They had paced around the house in their heavy boots stepping over the rose petals I'd been plucking that night. It's been three days since, and I haven't spent a second without thinking about her. I keep reliving our memories, and I feel devastated at the fact she's probably rebuilding them with someone else, without much remorse. Most of all, I'm still shocked and confused as to why this happened. Part of me wants her to call me and say she's sorry. I cannot believe this is the same person that I loved. I'm so sorry you had to go through this, OP. It's normal to feel shocked and confused after uncovering infidelity. Although this was a huge blow, in instances like this, it's important to distract yourself and maintain some sense of routine to remember just how great you really are. When you're feeling down and in desperate need of a pick-me-up, turn to the man in the mirror. Sure, this woman wasn't the one for you, but that's no reason to give up searching for the one. What better way to prepare for that special someone by taking care of your skin so that you're polished up and feeling great when they pop into your life? No need to fear a rogue dryer, she'll be caressing that silky smooth chin of yours. That's why I'm excited to have Tej Hanley as the sponsor of today's video. You've heard me talk about them before and you're going to keep hearing me talk about them because I know the positive impact their products will have on your life. Seriously, I still don't think some of you believe me when I tell you how much implementing a quality skincare routine will improve your confidence in all aspects of your life. Tej Hanley simplifies the process of taking care of your skin. They provide you with all the products you need and nothing you don't. I recommend you start with their level one system, which comes with all the basics a daily face wash, an exfoliating scrub, and AM moisturizer with SPF 20, and a PM moisturizer. Oh, and to make it dead simple for guys like us, they provide this instruction card in every box that tells you when to use each product, how much to use, and in what order. It definitely comes in clutch. Skincare wasn't always something I took seriously, but now that I have, I wish I would have started sooner. But you don't have to just take my word for it because they have over 7,000 five-star reviews from customers around the globe. In addition to amazing skin, members of Tej Hanley get tons of benefits, including at least 20% off the retail price, access to exclusive monthly deals, pause or cancel at any time, and free U.S. shipping. And because Tej Hanley is sponsoring today's video, they're offering our viewers a great deal. Just click the first link in the description and you'll get 30% off your first box, plus a free gift. Don't miss out on this amazing deal. Click that link and get started today. Now let's see what we've got in the comments. Ivan Pink says, I'm really sorry this happened to you, but on the other hand, five months of your life is a small price to pay compared to the sneak peek you got of your future. Your girlfriend showed you that she will escalate to physical violence when confronted about cheating, is unable to have a mature conversation with you, and is untruthful. You now see what she is like, and you do not need to tolerate it. I'm also sorry that you lost what you thought was love, but love is honest, love means both partners are equals, and she did not give you either of those things. I would take some time to recover, but understand she is not the only person you will ever love. You have so much time ahead of you. 
full of exciting and healthy things, and you do not need to waste another second on someone who doesn't care about you. Decorum1 chimes in. When guys talk about crazy, this is what they mean. The crazy ones make you feel like a million bucks. Then they eviscerate you and knit your intestines into a pair of mittens for themselves. Then they make you feel like a million bucks again. Like the love of your life. Until... Springfield 2016 says, Okay, time for a reality check. First love, check. 21-year-old girlfriend, check. Relationship five months, check. Trust gone, check. Start working on improving yourself. You have shown self-respect by leaving. Now, continue to become the man you want to be without a cheater hanging on to you. No five-month relationship is worth putting up with disrespect. This is part of becoming a true adult. You are learning to respect yourself enough to make tough decisions. Sometimes those decisions hurt, but in the long run, they are the best thing for you. Next up, a family in turmoil because of a brother's selfish act. Husband told me my brother is cheating on his wife. How to proceed? Hi, I'm new to Reddit, but was suggested to come here for advice. So I have four brothers, all older. My husband has four brothers as well. I've been married for 10 years, been with my husband for almost 20 since childhood. Providing these details to basically say, our families are so intertwined. All of us live in the same area. Our kids play and go to school together. We see each other a lot. I love our life. Once a month, we do a huge adults only group dinner. Then we tend to branch off into husbands and wives and just sit around and talk about life. We've been doing this for years. One of the cardinal rules is, like our marital bed, unless it's life-threatening. What is said in those meetings stays there and is sacred. That being said, on the wives' end, I think the worst I've heard is how one of my sister-in-laws from my husband's side wishes she would have waited to marry my brother-in-law because the growing pains were rough. Teen pregnancy, shotgun wedding. Anyway, we had our last meeting last weekend. We had some drinks and edibles, legal in our state. All the kids were being taken care of for the night with the grandparents and not present. Since that time, my husband had been really distant. I struggle with mental illness and I'm really sensitive to these ships. So I thought I had done something. Finally, last night, I made him tell me what was wrong. He told me that my brother, the one who is staunchly anti-cheating to the point he didn't go to our father's funeral because he cheated on his mom with my mom and was with my mom until she died, confessed while high last night that he's been sleeping with a coworker, they are teachers, for the past three years. This woman he's had integrated into our lives. She's been at family functions and even a couple of these parties with her husband. I'm in shock and disgusted, not just for my sister-in-law and nieces, but also for the woman's husband. He and I fought cancer together during the pandemic, and so I consider him to be family. Her too. My brother and I are extremely close, but I also love my sister-in-law. They've been married for almost nine years, together for 13 or 14. She's my sister. My husband is struggling. He and my brother are so, so close. His mom cheated on his dad and his dad drank himself to death. He feels guilty for telling me because he feels like he's betraying my brother and the rules of the group. I don't know if I'm wrong, but I don't feel like he broke the rule because I feel like infidelity is life-threatening. Maybe not fatally, but it threatens the foundation of your current life. Also, I'm of the mind that cheaters don't get to feel betrayal when it comes to the consequences. Anyway, my brother is asking my husband not to tell. But he has. I wouldn't have forgiven me if he didn't. My family is all in my house right now. I told the other woman not to come. I want to tell my sister-in-law, obviously not in front of everyone. My husband says she deserves to know, but we shouldn't be the ones to tell. He's been telling my brother to confess, but my brother says he needs time. I don't want to shatter anyone's world. I've never dealt with this. I feel sick having the knowledge and watching my brother pretending to be this great man. He looked upset when I said the other woman wasn't coming. Her husband's cancer is back and I want to tell him because he has a right to know as well as no immune system, but she's also his only support. But I can't hold this in. Any advice? I feel like crap because I have zero desire to protect my brother. Edit. So my husband was able to get more information from my brother. I am even more disgusted. Some of the times they were hooking up, my sister-in-law was at home dealing with a very colicky baby and he was busy with work. There were times when her husband was in the hospital and they were hooking up. We have decided to tell him. The other woman has said that she won't tell him herself and allow him to move in with us if he needs. My brother has to tell his wife tonight. We have their kids. I told him if he doesn't tell her himself, I will tell her tomorrow when she comes to get the kids. He planned to sneak off with her tonight. My brother has told us we are ruining his life. Tried to say that we would be doing more damage to a cancer patient, etc. I reminded him that 
By them being reckless, they are endangering his life and betraying multiple foundations. I did snap and tell him he's no better than our father he hated. He's a horrible human and I will help her clean him out. My best friend is a divorce attorney and is going to put together some resources for my sister-in-law if she decides to divorce. I'm still reeling, but I feel so badly for my sister-in-law, the husband, and the kids. Update. It won't let me update my post, so here's an update. As I know more, I'll update. I don't know if it violates the rules, but I feel like the cheaters are the lowest of lows. I have never dealt with infidelity up close like this. My parents were 10 years deep when I was born, and I had only heard about other stories after it happened. My sister-in-law said that she wants to die, she's in so much pain, and that broke me. I can't even say if I love my brother anymore because right now, I hate his guts. Update. It's been a rough, rough night. We went with my sister-in-law to tell the affair partner's husband, but she asked that we just stay outside. She was in there for a long while. She said he didn't take it well as expected. We texted him and let him know he was welcome to stay with us. He said he wanted to talk to his wife first, but that he may need us to come back. He's at our house now. My sister-in-law decided to stay with us and be with us and our kids at least for the night, and they may transition to her parents. I've advised that she go back home and kick him out tomorrow. Why should she have to leave a house that she didn't crumble? This is what we know and we are unsure how to proceed but plan to get some sleep and plan. The emotional affair started about five years ago and they met in his master's program. He helped her get both of her jobs. She's had at least one abortion. She's confident that it was my brother's because her husband was on chemo and the limited times they had sex it was protected. My brother said that was the reason he got snipped. They began physically exploring when my sister-in-law was pregnant with their youngest, who just turned three. My oldest niece was a preemie and so my sister-in-law had to take shots with the youngest and then was classified high risk and was on bed rest and the baby still came 10 weeks early. My brother said that he strayed because he didn't want a second child, realized that he felt trapped into a life that he didn't want and that the affair partner got him in ways my sister-in-law doesn't. The affair partner started the affair because before cancer her husband was a workaholic who she says wasn't emotionally present but that she stayed because he is an engineer and liked the life. She said the cancer made it harder. The long-term plan was for both of them to leave their spouses. Her plan was to get him into remission and then leave, or he would die. She signed a prenup as so as long as there was no infidelity, he agreed to be more than fair. She disclosed that they weren't the only people that they had sex with, and they participated in group sex with another couple that were also cheating on their partners. He did not disclose this to my sister-in-law and said it was only her. They have both had one STI. They would hook up when her husband was at chemo, in the hospital, and during the pandemic, my brother would say he needed to go to the school for something. They've had sex in my house, his house, their house, and her parents' house, as well as most recently on a family freaking vacation trip. It was his idea to bring her around us. I got diagnosed with cancer about six weeks after he did, and about a week before the world shut, and my brother thought that having a chemo partner would be nice, so he could bang her. They had almost been caught on a couple of occasions having sex at work. Right now, my sister-in-law wants to work it out for her kids. The husband said there's not a way if these are his final years that he would stay with her. She doesn't know if she's going to tell her girls. The whole family knows, and while my brother has tried to spin the whole, my husband betrayed the trust of the group, everyone has been pretty like, yeah, sure, but also, you're a scumbag. I'm so incredibly angry at my brother for cheating, for lying, for hurting his wife, for hurting his kids, for being a hypocrite. When my husband came back home with the affair partner's husband, he said he swore he saw my brother's car parked on the street. Wow, this is so heartbreaking. It's hard to believe that people want to hurt others who are already experiencing so much physical trauma. It seems like your brother and his affair partner are both very weak people. I think you have every right to be angry with your brother. He became the very thing that he hated himself. Shame on a affair partner for cheating on her husband. It's extremely selfish on her to think that he wouldn't survive if he had left. Newish update. No one in this house slept well, and this morning, it felt like we were all mourning. I rallied the other ladies, and we took my sister-in-law out, and the husbands came over to hang out with the affair partner's husband. Felt it was easier since the exhausts easy compounded with his heartbreak. I showed my sister-in-law the post, and she said thank you for encouraging us to force him to tell her. She said she is struggling with wanting to be angry at us for telling her. I told her I feel like that's normal. My husband woke up angrier than I have ever seen him. He's told my brother that he is not welcome anywhere near our home at this point indefinitely. Many of the other husbands have followed suit. My sister-in-law said she opened the where's my iPhone app and could see his location was near her residence. I'm a planner, so I don't know if this is the best plan, but what we have come up with so far is she's meeting with the lawyer this week. I've told her that we will help pay for it. 
Her mom works for a divorce attorney and has said she will help as well. I want to hire a forensic accountant. We have been giving my brother money for the last year and she says she's never seen this money. We plan to open her an account that only has her name on it. All of us, the group plus her parents. We aren't wealthy by any means, but are all pretty comfortable, are putting up some money so she has the ability to take care of her girls. I gently told her even if she wants to reconcile, she needs to at least file so that she can start receiving at least some child support for him. I've told her that like she was there for me when I was battling cancer, I will step up for her. She looks like a zombie and I can tell she just needs to break. I've told her I'll take the girls as much as she needs me to, although the wives are stepping up in that way. I'm going to talk with a lawyer about access to the money from our dad's estate I set aside for the girls. I believe I can just sign it over to her, and I'm not worried about her spending it badly, but I want to make sure there's nothing that would hurt her legally. The affair partner's husband is going scorched earth, and I'm honestly here for it. He's got a relationship with their principal and sent a formal email about what was going on. He's moved as much money as he could online and plans to speak with a lawyer next week. They had an infidelity clause, so she will have nothing. I asked her if he contacted her and she said he sent her a text asking to speak to the girls and she said no. Then he told her that he loves her because she's the mother of his children but that he doesn't have the fire for her that he feels with the affair partner but that he doesn't want their marriage to end. I didn't say out loud but I can only think that I hope he and the affair partner both spontaneously combust. I've canceled his Disney ticket but he will not take this experience away from the kids. All I know how to do right now is to be there for her. My family knows. I'm sure my mental illness doesn't help, that the worst thing you can do to me is hurt someone I love. I would rather take the hurt. He's hurt someone who is my family. I've watched for years as she's been nothing but the best she could for him. She kept saying, I just wished he would have talked to me. And I keep reminding her that she did nothing wrong and that he's the scum here. My brothers have told him that he's dead to them. As crappy as the situation is, it's nice to see so many people come together to support your sister-in-law and affair partner's husband in such a beautiful way. Having a supportive community to help them get through this is everything. It would be interesting to find out where the money you've been giving your brother is actually going. You may have been unknowingly supporting his infidelity and secret sex sexcapades. And as for affair partner's husband scorching the earth, burn baby burn. I have one last update for now. She's decided to keep the kids out of school this week. Her oldest is in proper school, but her youngest has been going to daycare one to two times a week for socialization. She's fearful he may try to pick them up from school. They have spring break next week, so she said she's going to call it an extended break. After her meetings this week, we want to take them to the water or do something fun. She doesn't want to go back into the house. She said she can't go back into that home, especially knowing those two deplorable humans had sex in their marital bed. She's religious, and that is such a sacred place for her. And I don't know why this makes me even more enraged that he could stoop so low, but alas, here we are. The affair partner has been spam texting her and her husband with details about their affair. My sister-in-law blocked her. She was having panic attacks. The husband didn't, but said he's not responding, but wants it as evidence. My brother asked if she would come back home and talk to him. She's refusing, her choice. She said she's reached a level of hurt where she doesn't think she could remain calm. She's getting tested tomorrow, as is the affair partner's husband. She said she can't take reconciliation off the table. I think religion is playing a huge part, but that if she was forced to make a decision, don't want to use her exact words in case it's against the rules, in the moment, there's no way she could ever forgive him and allow him access to her in any intimate way. Update. I have an update. Nothing too dramatic. I'll keep updating as it unfolds. My husband and I have finally gotten some sleep. My house still feels like it did after both my father-in-law and my father passed. Update. My sister-in-law met with my brother for about four hours last night when she came back she asked my husband and i if we were serious about supporting her if she divorced him we told her absolutely she said she wants to go scorched earth she didn't say too much but that her whole marriage has been a lie she told us that my brother disclosed to her that he had been demoted at work went from being a department head on the principal track to classroom work only and that delayed his leaving her she met with a divorce attorney today he did advise she returned to the marital home and that because if my brother meets with a lawyer they will tell him the same thing she needs to file first. We took her to lunch while she thought about it and she pulled the trigger, hired the attorney and they said he should be served by the end of the week. The affair partner's husband is filing for divorce as well. His sister who lives on the opposite coast, their age difference made their relationship not as close, but he says she's an amazing person. It's coming to help him. The affair partner effed their finances. 
My brother has called me every name in the book and said that I and my husband are horrible people because he's not only likely to going to lose his family, but also his job. He's also made some accusations about the other husbands and has spun his affair as being justified. The husbands he accused are now turning on my husband. He said to my husband, you think it's easy to not cheat on your wife, but wait until you meet your soulmate. Then say it's easy. My husband just said he is married to a soulmate, so he can't relate and told him he still chose to cheat when he could have left. She got tested today and will have her results this week. She's terrified and it's breaking my heart. We found therapists for her and the girls. They have appointments on Thursday. She's telling her girls about the divorce once she gets word he's been served. My siblings and I have hired a forensic accountant because he had been using their family income to support this affair. And for the last year, my brothers and I have helped him out to the tune of about 60,000 between all of us. My husband and I were paying their mortgage for at least six months. My sister-in-law didn't know, which makes sense now since his demotion came with a massive pay cut. The estate lawyer said since my brother put in writing he didn't want the inheritance and that I could do what I want with it, I could give it to my sister-in-law, but advised to wait until the divorce is final and just remove my brother's name. We opened a bank account in her name and put some funds in there. He reported all her cards as lost or stolen. A fair partner and my brother are harassing me, but they are leaving their spouses alone and I'm not responding, so I don't give an F. Let's get a quick community reaction from only here to stare. Your brother's a piece of work. He's been cheating on his wife for a third of the marriage. This is a terrible spot to be in for you and your husband. The thing is, the longer you keep silent, the more complicit you become. Ask yourself if you were sister-in-law how you'd feel about other close family members knowing and not saying anything. I know he's your brother, but you did say that she was your sister. You and your husband need to speak with your brother and tell him he needs to come clean or you will. The fact that he brought the affair partner to your family gatherings is beyond disrespectful to his wife and kids. Who does that? I wish you all the best, but this is going to be rough. Your brother sounds like he's passing the blame to everyone but himself. Nobody ruined his life but himself. Your husband is absolutely right. Your brother chose to cheat. I'm glad your sister-in-law finally pulled the plug. You and your husband are absolute angels to help your sister-in-law out so much. There's nothing people need more in times like these than supportive family and friends. Wishing you all the best. Would reconciliation be an option for you? What would you do if your spouse said someone other than you was their soulmate? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for joining us today on Our Space. Like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. We'd hate for you to miss it. If you want to listen to more stories from me, check out Our Lounge, where I feature a larger variety of non-cheating related stories. See you there!